Hello everybody, Excalibur here, and I just wanted to go and do a quick, quick, quick channel update and unboxing all at the same time. Um, so, uh, I've got a new Patreon patron, and that is awesome. So, uh, that puts me up to six patrons. And, uh, this is just after I went ahead and updated my Patreon page. Go figure. Um, I've been reading through it, and uh, the more I read through it, the more I read through it, the more I realized, hey, it's a little bit kind of wacky, a little bit out there. So I decided I would um, prune it, clip it, put things uh, in different perspective and stuff like that. Uh, the first thing that I want you to know about is that um, I've gone through and I've cleaned up the rewards a little bit, and I've also cleaned up the uh, milestones. So uh, you're going to see a video here possibly going over that maybe. Um, I might put that in here and turn this into a little tiny picture. But uh, um, what's happened here is, um, then I'm going to look at the page here and explain it. So I've gone and I've redone the, the whole intro. And it reads as this, at one point in time we've all searched the web for videos, blog posts, and other media about a game that we are interested in buying or finding out more about. We may look for tutorials or inspiration for building things in Minecraft for, or watching multiplayer games for the entertainment of watching friends backstab each other. We've been curious about what actually comes in the game box and what the quality of the components are. If you're like me, you spend a lot of time on YouTube watching video game playthroughs, let's plays, reviews, interviews, and other content. Uh, you may you want an informed opinion of the pros and cons of a game you're interested in buying, or you'd like to see how a particular game plays, be it video game or board game, so that you can teach your friends and family. This is what I enjoy doing. This is what I want to do through YouTube, Twitch, Beam, my website, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, and other outlets, I want to improve the content I create to better help people understand games, enjoy themselves, or help in making an informed purchasing decision. In order to achieve this, I have created this Patreon campaign. I am working to improve the quality and diversity of my content, and I cannot do that with the limited budget I have after bills are paid. So I am reaching out to you for help. There are rewards and milestones associated with this campaign, and it is my intention to make these something worthwhile to my patrons. Please take a moment to look over the rest of my campaign page. I hope it entices you enough to become my patron. Thank you. Next caliber. So that is the preamble to everything. And I think it is far more succinct, and it's not wishy-washy and fun to my lifey kind of thing. It's... I want to improve my content, and how can I do that? I can do that with more live recordings of gameplay and stuff like that um, to get better equipment and all this. And the milestones, which I'll go over next, um, reflect this. So at 250 a month, it is uh, a gaming server, and I'll set up a server for my patrons um, who pledge and maintain an appropriate level of support. At the start, this may be a Minecraft server, uh, the vanilla. Uh, version of Minecraft that means unmodded and probably no game mode 4 but we'll have to see about that but it be, but it could be anything that allows for a centralized private server for multiplayer play this also includes access to my mumble server which I do have a mumble server and uh, I keep it up and I keep uh, that paid off uh, a couple of years at a time so um, when um, this gaming server goes online, there'll be automatic communication, everything, people will be whitelisted, given the passwords and stuff like that. So that's at 250. At 300, quarterly giveaways happen. Each quarter um, that the that this milestone is met, that it, that it keeps staying at 300, I'll randomly select a patron to receive a copy of one of the products that I've unboxed or viewed. Now, a patron who has won is not going to be um, able to win again uh, for the next couple of quarters to give more people chances but uh, um, at 300 per month uh, if I review or unbox a game or I do a Kickstarter preview or I unbox a Kickstarter I will provide a copy of that and what I'll do is at the 
end of the month of everything that I've done, I'll go ahead and uh, we'll do a straw poll or something like that, and we'll see which one people are interested in. Um, the next tier at 400 per month, there'll be quarterly video game giveaways. So if I do a console game um, or a video game like Minecraft or something like that, uh, a patron will receive a random key code or they'll get um, a ship from Amazon uh, version of the disc for the platform that it was reviewed for. So if I do a PS3 version of Kingdom Hearts, then um, Kingdom Hearts will go out to a random person. And again, it'll be a random uh, patron, and they'll be out of the running for a couple of months, but uh, there'll also be a straw poll of uh, the console and video games that I covered, either in Let's Plays or whatnot, and uh, you'll get a chance to win that. Um, the next tier at 500 per month is live streaming. Uh, at this level, I'll build into my schedule of weekly live streams of video games. Uh, which video game? Well, it's up to my patrons. Um, I will provide a poll with a selection of games, choose it, and I'll play it that week. And this is for both PC and console games. So at this level, um, I'll hopefully be making enough to get myself an Elgato and an, a console for the games that I want to play, like maybe a PS4 or an Xbox One or something like that. And we'll have to see. Um, but if we get up to this level, then I'll be able to provide um, more content on Twitch or Beam or Hitbox or um, any of the streaming sets that are out there. The next level is at 1000 per month and it's upgraded recording software and equipment. Um, I'll be able to upgrade my recording equipment to handle higher quality content, uh, dedicated mics for players and stuff like that. Um, and I'll be able to upgrade to the pro versions of uh, the NLEs that I'm looking at. Currently I'm looking at HitFilm Express. Um, I'm going to see how well that does with uh, doing intros and with uh, um, NLE editing and all this other stuff. It is a professional level. We're talking indie movie makers use it, and it is a professional level um, nonlinear editor. That's what NLE stands for. In other words, uh, take iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. You get a track that you put video clips and pictures and audio on, but it's all sequential, and you can only ever go on that one line. You can't overlap anything. A nonlinear editor such as Camtasia or um, Blender, uh, HitFilm, uh, Adobe Premiere, that kind of thing, you actually have a bunch of tracks and you can overlap videos and do picture in a picture and a whole bunch of other things and do transitions between the two crossfades, you name it. You can do a whole bunch of stuff. Nonlinear editing is where it's at. iMovie and um, anything that is a sequential editor is pretty much garbage in terms of doing a high quality um, uh, video. And uh, I want to go up to the pro versions of these because the number of um, plugins and effects and stuff like that is really high and it unlocks a couple more features. Um, also, I believe HitFilm uh, records to 1080p 60 frames per second. So that means I'll be able to go up to higher quality video at the 1080p 60. Uh, it's going to be bigger files, but for the most part, I will be able to provide uh, much better uh, quality content in the future. So the next tier is additional recording opportunities at 2000 per month. Um, if we ever get to that, I will be able to dedicate far more time to recording game content at that level. Um, strings can hap streams, not strings, streams can happen earlier in the day, and a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, of course, it depends on family and work, but uh, on days that I have off and family is out, I can actually stream earlier in that day, do longer streams, that kind of thing, instead of doing at 10 o'clock or whatever, um, or if I can get at 10 o'clock, uh, doing a 1 a.m. or midnight stream, which a lot of people admittedly can't hit. People in Europe are just waking up, and I don't think they really want to, um, well, they might, um, but people in Europe are just waking up, so, um, and that's 5 a.m., so they're early birds if they're doing that. They're probably getting ready for work. Anyway, um, that will allow me to uh, um, work around my work and family schedules and do some extra stuff. Now uh, at 3000 per month 
we go to improved recording environments where instead of recording player matches in my dining room or in uh, my um, FLGS of Richmond Comics or Battlegrounds um, or even Dragon's Den if I go over there we've got like five or six different uh, game stores around here but the problem is there's people that go in there and shop and they talk and some people don't think about the cameras they just come up and start talking to you while you're trying to record and do stuff so um, at this tier I would be able to go and rent a space and record matches at certain times um, possibly even go to a library and record matches or uh, get a private um, studio or, or quiet room in order to do this as well so um, that will help take care of a lot of uh, the loudness from the FLGS plus the equipment for like dedicated uh, lapel mics and stuff like that would help um, offset sounds in FLGS and um, hopefully with that combination we'll be able to get some really good quality game stuff going now at 5000 per month and this is really like shooting way out there I've seen people on Patreon get up there and it's possible to get the 5000 per month or whatnot but at that level um, I will be able to do full-time content creation and reduce my workload and my day job um, and still be able to um, pay bills and take care of daycare and stuff like that so I'll be able to film at any time of the day that my son is in daycare in school um, and uh, I'll be able to do far more um, streams and recording and um, improvements and stuff like that to my videos because then I'll be concentrating more on doing YouTube and Twitch and a whole bunch of other things so um, full-time content creation is the goal is my goal I'd like to be able to do that if I can get 5,000 or more per month and that could be as many as getting like uh, um, 5,000 people who give a dollar a month and then that would be pretty much close to what I need um, outside of the fees and stuff for patreon so those are the um, milestones if we go any higher than that then we're looking at um, going to conventions and covering conventions and trying out new games that are only displayed there like at Gen Con and stuff like that but uh, I'm not thinking that far ahead because I I'm really hoping we hit that 250 a month line but uh, we'll have to see what goes on so how do we get these milestones those milestones are from patrons who donate a certain amount of money per month now if we did this um, on a per creation basis which is a default for patreon the number of videos I put out um, and blog posts and stuff like that they would charge whatever you are pledging every single time I did a video so if I do 10 videos in a week then and you pledge six dollars that's 60 bucks for the week and that's not really good for your pocket but uh, at a dollar a month or three dollars a month or whatever per month um, that's far more affordable and I can put out as much or as little content as I um, have time to do so so there are several different reward tiers and I really streamlined them and I um, hope you can uh, um, appreciate them it doesn't change anything for current patrons because uh, um, all I did is expand a little bit um, and I've already provided rewards for a lot of these but if I changed it enough I would give out the reward again but that didn't happen after I went through and I revised everything so what happens if you pledge a dollar or more per month um, you're gonna get a shout out if you want me to in a video and uh, you also get to see patreon content um, such as new intros and pitches for new shows and a whole bunch of stuff that is patreon only um, most of my stuff is up there for everybody to see so that they can go oh look at this dude look what he's doing um, but if I do anything that is patron only you will be able to see it at one dollar a month or more and you'll be able to vote and chat and talk and stuff like that about it at three dollars or more a month um, I will add a statue or a sign of you sign for you in um, a, a patreon monument that I'm building I'm currently using um, what is it called it's uh, mod sauce and uh, there's a problem with that the mod sauce mod pack isn't being updated they've um, the hermit craft folks have started a second mod sauce pack 
but uh, to tell you the honest truth, I think I'm going to go with something a little more stable, probably with the straight, um, straight Minecraft, and just do a redo the Patreon monument and everything in there, and create little statues or something. Um, I might go with how False Symmetry has done it and put up banners for everybody instead of statues, because that way you can uh, dedicate a banner if you want, something along those lines. But um, there is that. If you have a YouTube channel, um, go ahead and let me know because then I can pimp your YouTube channel in my video. I've only I've got around 200 and some odd uh, viewers now. Let me just double check that. Um, <laughs> there we go. We are looking at. Oh, it's not showing, so let me refresh. Oh boy. There we go. Alright, so if we come over here, I'm at 205 subscribers on YouTube. Nothing to sneeze at. It's nothing um, to get everything like super duper duper viewed all the time. Uh, my views are actually going up more on my unboxings than it is on my video games. Um, and uh, my little things, I uh, have a, a private video where I do a Bugs Bunny impersonation. <clears throat> Let's see here. And what's up, Doc? So there you go, I did that. It was uh, for Jerky XP. He was, <laughs> um, he put something up there. Uh, I think it was a Bugs Bunny or something. So I just went ahead and did that impersonation for him. Anyway, at uh, $3 or more per month, uh, 200 viewers have the opportunity to to get your YouTube channel if you're a YouTube creator just like uh, I am and you'll be able to uh, get that shout out now at six or more per month uh, I'm gonna send a digital postcard now these are all cumulative so if you do the one and the th if you do the one you get the one if you do the three you get the one and the three if you do the six you get the one the three and the six now there are some that have limits on them and this is a little bit different and I'll get to those in a second but uh, for the most part all tiers get all the previous tiers except for a few um, ex exceptions and we'll get to that so at six dollars um, a digital postcard thanking you for your uh, donation in addition to the shout out and everything like that at ten dollars or more per month um, if you choose the ten dollars or more per month you'll be whitelisted on vanilla minecraft server should the vanilla minecraft server um, milestone be unlocked and uh, you'll get mumble and all that stuff so you also need to maintain that level every month people who don't maintain uh, the pledges are going to be um, unwaitlisted and those who continue their pledges at that level are going to be waitlisted so um, there's a whole bunch of stuff that has to go on most of this stuff is going to require that you maintain your pledge um, over the course of however long you want to use it and uh, that is one of the um, stipulations at $20 um, I'll send you a physical postcard with a handwritten message I've only had one go out um, but at $20 you get that and everything below, below that at 50 you get a mug and I've got an example mug here somewhere and it's hidden let me see if I can find it I know I've got it Okay, it's not readily available. It's probably hiding under junk right now. Uh, oh, here it is. It's hiding in the back. So here's an example of the mug. It's a little bit dusty because uh, it's been sitting in my office. Um, I'm going to take a look and make sure that I'm getting this in there. So this is uh, Bruna Deck Tech, uh, Commander Deck Tech. And uh, it's Excalibur's on. It's Bruna, Light Alabaster. And it's just a, a modified screen, uh, modified splash screen for the video. And uh, I put it on a mug, and uh, one of my friends, who uh, was very, very generous, um, got one of these mugs. I, I ordered two because I liked how it looked. So stuff like this, if you like uh, the Regency Solitaire, you can get that. It's a splash screen of one of the series that I'm doing. You'll get one um, at this level. Now if you go to 100 a month, um, you can see your name listed as a producer and a series of your choice. One series. Um, 
that I release. Your name will be listed in the end credits for every episode of that series for as long as you donate at this level. And that's where that comes in. You see, uh, um, when you stop donating at that level, which is fine, I do not um, mind that. But once uh, you remove your pledge at the $100 per level, um, or $100 level per month, um, you cease to have that uh, be a producer of the show that you've chosen. Um, that's just to, to keep the incentive going. If the series gets um, more and more popular, people see that you're supporting it and that kind of thing. That's uh, just an honor that I bestow. Now, at $150 or more per month, this is where things get really interesting. I put a limit of this. Ten um, patrons can do 150 or more per month, and that is to help me design a 12-episode series based on a video game, um, and we'll collaborate via email and Skype to bring the series together, and I'll record it, and uh, you will be listed as co-producer and co-creator of the series. Excuse me, and in addition, excuse me, in addition, um, I'll send you a copy of the series on DVD or Blu-ray once I have the equipment to burn um, the video content onto those DVDs. So you will be able to not only uh, help me design the series, you'll become co-creator and uh, um, co-producer, and you will also get physical media of uh, the series for you to keep for as long as you want. Um, at 250 per month, we go to a 26 episode series, and you, you get everything before. Um, and uh, the uh, um, Blu-ray and DVD and all that stuff goes with it. Uh, the difference here, the difference with these, and the next one is a 500 or more, and we do a 52 episode series. Now each of these, 150, the 250, and the 500, they all have 10 out of 10 uh, uh, slots, so only 10 people can do it. And this is mainly a time constraint. If uh, that's 30 total people and 30 total series and I couldn't keep that up and I want to be able to make sure that um, things get queued up in a way that will allow um, for me to service everybody and doing episodes the thing is uh, when we design it we're going to design what's going to happen at the start what's going to happen at the end and how we have to get through all that and uh, um, how that goes I don't know I haven't talked to anybody about it yet but this is one of those things where we're going to work together, build this, and release it, and you'll get the physical media. Now, when we hit 750 a month, this is um, sponsorship begins. It's like a, an FLGS gives me $750 um, or, or a one-time donation of 750 You become a sponsor. Your logo um, of your company is added to uh, the end credits of uh, a selected series. Um, you and your company will be listed as a sponsor of the series, and you'll be listed on my YouTube About page, and on my personal, on my uh, Excalibur Zone website, uh, with links to your company. And the uh, YouTube About page and the website will be a forever thing. So, at seven hundred fifty dollars, bam, people know that you sponsored me, and we're good to go now. If you have a company that is not family oriented or has a is adult in nature, uh, speak with me. I do not want uh, a porn site to come on and give me 750 bucks, and then have uh, pictures of boobies and stuff like that all over my um, site and web page, and people clicking on it and going to adult material. That is a very bad thing. Um, I'm trying to keep a family friendly. Um, and family-centric channel, so I even keep curse words and stuff like that down. If I put together a second channel, an after-dark channel, so to speak, then that's a possibility, but I still do not want to pimp porn sites or anything like that. Um, but the sponsorship logos and everything will remain in videos uh, for as long as you maintain sponsorship, or one year, whichever is longest. So, say you sponsor my deck tech series and I do a deck tech per month um, your logo will appear at the end and company name and all that stuff your links will remain forever but in the video 
for the next year, so about 12 episodes, or um, if you go for like 15 months, then after a year, or whenever you stop the, the uh, um, sponsorship, whichever is longest, it'll continue. Um, at 1500 per month, uh, it's the same thing, but it's three series, and at 3000 or more per month, um, you'll be listed as a sponsor for every video that I produce, and you still have the for a year or as long as you contribute. Now, I do not expect 1500 or 1000 I barely expect to get more than um, 6 to 10 from anybody. I'm perfectly fine with getting no patrons. It helps a lot. But I'm not forcing anybody. You don't have to do it. If you want to, that's fine. Do it for as long as you want. A one-time donation. It doesn't matter. That's all. Now, that is everything that's changed about the Patreon site. And uh, hopefully the changes attract more people because they're a little bit more in line with... Um, things that you would get and uh, I feel that they aren't as overblown as they were before like oh donate 10,000 a month yeah that was pretty much more uh, a one-time donation deal for sponsorship but the thing is a lot of people um, probably looked at that and said you are crazy man you're crazy so there is a lot of things going on with that now I did mention an unboxing and um, what I did is my son and I have been watching My Little Pony and it's a, I think it's a very very well written children's show it's it's geared towards girls but my son loves it he's four years old um, I went out and I got him these My Little Pony um, minifigs right here I'll show you right here I don't even know what her name is uh, let's see here this is Lemon Hearts there we go nice little pony of course and then we've got um, Lucky Swirl who is a, a unicorn looks like she's got Twilight Sparkle style hairdo that kind of deal but uh, there was that and I got him a couple of um, I think they're Juarez let me see here My Little Pony Mystery Minis um, Vinyl Figures Funko They're the same ones that do the Funko Pop Bobbleheads But uh, I got him a couple of these This is Fluttershy One of the main six And uh, I don't know why They have the black Skins That's something I didn't Really count on And uh, this is a uh, one of the fan favorites her name is derpy and you can see her eyes are a little googly they're derpy eyes let me get it in close and then pull it out well anyway um there is a card game and i'm putting her over on my uh um av receiver anyway there's a, a card game called uh my little pony collectible card game and i have found um, that a lot of people are saying that it is a very good game. Now, it's a single player to begin playing a fun and strategic two-player game, which brings a magic of friendship home with the My Little Pony collectible card game. There are problems in Ponyville, so choose your main pony, round up some ponies, and go lend a hoof. You can now collect and play with your favorite ponies. Look for Twilight Sparkle, Nightmare Moon, Fluttershy, Paris Sprites Galore, and more. Be sure to watch out for the troublemakers. Now this game is made for two players. Each player must have a 56 card deck of My Little Pony CCG cards to play. The Premier Edition contains over 230 cards. So uh, you can go to enter-play.com for more info. It's recommended for ages 10 and up. And uh, I hear it's a really fun game. So I bought a couple of packs just to see a couple of decks. Let's see what it's like. So this is the actual 59 cards, rules, and more. 
and uh, we're going to see what this is all about. This is uh, the Rarity and Rainbow Dash theme deck. So I'm going to pull this out. There's the box again. Set this over out of the way. And we're going to start with um, you have action tokens, one in five point action tokens. And on the back, you can see they have element elements of harmony. Um, for those of you who don't know, there are six main ponies, and each one represents a, an element. Uh, there's laughter, um, loyalty, uh, ooh, boy, it's, I can't remember, generosity, um, adventure, honesty, magic, and uh, kindness. So those are the six different um, elements. Anyway, um, there's that. Here is the rule book. That's nice and small. And uh, you can see we've got a bunch of the main six here. We've got Applejack, Fluttershy, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Pinkie Pie. And up here we've got Twilight Sparkle, we've got Granny Smith, Nightmare Moon, we've got one of those uh, Paris Sprites there, Big Mac. I don't know who that is, and I don't know who that is. So, let me see. No, I don't even know who that is. Uh, this might be Doctor Who's, because if you take a look at him, he's got a time, um, a sat, an hourglass for a, a cutie mark which uh, I think he has. Oh, and there's the Elements of Harmony all all grown up. So this is Applejack's and uh, Fluttershy's. This is Pinkie Pie's. Uh, Rarity's up here. Rainbow Dash is in here too. And then in the middle is uh, Twilight Sparkles. So we've got our standard rules. I'm going to go over the rules and figure out how to play the game. And it tells you about the cards and everything like that. Um, here are our friend and event cards. So what you're doing is you are playing a pony trying to solve problems. And uh, each player is trying to do the same thing. Who can solve the problem the fastest is the main thing that you're trying to do. And uh, there's the game set up and the phases. Um, troublemaker cards, which I think uh, stop you from resolving your problems. And end of turn. Face off for you have two problem troublemaker winning keywords timing rules other rules yep standard lots of text lots of text um, we'll take a look at the cards here in a moment we get this right here which I think is a play mat yeah there we go let's go ahead and open her up and take a look at it pretty big I've seen demos of this laid out. unfolding so as you can see here's a here's a play area you got your home uh, you got your score slider card um, your turn card your your problem deck your opponent's problem deck and then the turn order you've got your discard pile and your draw deck and a whole bunch of stuff here so there are that's the, the basic layout of the game pretty much in a poster um, I wonder if they have play maps of this. I don't know. We'll have to find out about that. Now, I like to play games of all types. Some people may laugh that I have the My Little Pony game. Go ahead and laugh. A 44-year-old man that likes playing games. Do you think My Little Pony, um, people who make fun of My Little Pony lovers, bronies as they're called, I can't consider myself a brony. I'm a fan of the show, but I am nowhere near um, like a Trekkie or Trekker or anything like that. Um, so I don't care if you laugh at me for picking up My Little Pony cards or for having vinyl figures of My Little Pony characters. I do have a favorite pony. Her name is DJ Pwn3 or Vinyl Scratch. I think everybody likes those characters and Derpy is my second character and then Fluttershy and Rarity. Those are the four that I like the best. Well the cards are nice and pretty good. You have uh, a foil rainbow dash here 
and then you have a non-foil rarity there you go tells you the home limit and everything on the back it's got more information and I think this is the boosted version so this is the start version and the boosted version um, you have your turn card, you have your scorecard, and then you have a bunch of friends like Holly Dash, Vidalia Swoon, and let me just, instead of me reading the cards, I'm just going to pull them off so you can see them. There we go. There's Holly Dash. And I don't know the card layout or anything or what anything means yet, but I will get to it. And then there's uh, Vidalia Swoon. And Jetstream. Now there are three different types of ponies. There are ground ponies, which I believe this is a ground pony. Nope, this is Pegasus. Um, there are ground ponies which don't have wings or horns. There are Pegasi, which have wings, of course. And there are unicorns. Now there's a, th a fourth type known as the alicorn, which is a uh, Pegasus with a unicorn horn. So let's see here. Um, finish line is known as a jammer. Friend, Earth Pony Full. So he is a youngie. He has his cutie mark, but um, there are ponies that don't have their cutie marks. That's kind of interesting to find out. And then here's Emerald Green, who likes cider. He's an Earth Pony, and so on and so forth. We we could go through all these cards, and I could bore you, or you could be interested. Uh, I am going to take a look at this game and see just how well it works. Oh, by the way, here's some events. Dig deep, and it looks like Rarity and Spike, Spike is the dragon, have uh, gone out to get some gems. And I remember watching this episode. Uh, let's see here. Swing into action. That's Daring Do. She is a Pegasus that's a lot like Indiana Jones, only she's a girl, and she's patterned after one of the main six, Rainbow Dash, who, if we uh, put them side by side, you'll see that they have the same design, just different colors, and their eyes are even the same color. So, it, it's one of the interesting things. If you notice, uh, um, Daring Do actually has... Uh, muted rainbow or black and white rainbow colors for her mane and all that. She's an author that writes her own books sort of like Indiana Jones and how he um, wrote about his stories and stuff like that. Let's see if there's anything interesting. Anything else interesting? Oh, here are some troublemakers and those are pair sprites and they tend to eat things so at the start of your opponent's troublemaker phase they discard a random card and uh, we'll see how these all work. They're timber wolves, and then it looks like there are problems. All right, let's go ahead and show you a problem here. This looks like there you go. That's that's what a problem looks like. Looking for trouble and bonus. Um, let's grab another problem, for instance. Let me get it focus in. There we go. I can fix it. When a player wins a face-off here by exactly one power, that player scores an additional point. That kind of thing. So, I'm going to find out how to play this game. I heard it was really good, and I'm going to have some fun with it. So, I hope you uh, like this little channel update and uh, the um, unboxing I did. It was just something I thought would be fun. I've got another deck here so that two people can play. I'm going to see how it goes. Um, maybe see if there are any single player variants out there. We'll have to find out. And uh, hmm, hopefully my Patreon page will pick up some. I got a new uh, patron today and hopefully hmm, we'll keep people around a bit longer. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, please enjoy playing games. All games. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you'd like to see. If uh, you like the um, new Patreon uh, reshuffle and organization please let me know if you don't please let me know if you don't care then uh, you're probably not going to leave a comment or even a like it happens and if you want please go ahead and uh, subscribe that really helps 
As always, it's Excalibur, and I am out.